Hey everybody, this is Ms. Corey. Um, so today we're going to talk about plagiarism. So I'm sorry that I did not um, like talk about plagiarism beforehand in the earlier in the semester. Um, I would just kind of assumed that people knew how to not plagiarize, um, but we'll learn about it now so that never happens again. All right, let's do this. So learning target, learn what plagiarism is and how to avoid it. So questions I will ask you will be in blue. So typically on Ed Puzzles, I grade your answers. If you give like an educated guess, you know, it's like relevant on topic. Um, you know, it makes sense with what I'm asking. Uh, however, today I'm gonna grade them on being right or wrong. So make sure that you pay attention. So in your own words, do not Google search this. What is plagiarism? So it is the practice of taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them off as one's own, according to the Oxford Dictionary. Uh, and we are going to talk about how to avoid that. So I'm going to do a few scenarios. Um, and in these scenarios, we'll kind of talk about how to avoid plagiarism. So here's the first one. Rebecca is writing a paper about goats. In her paper, she includes the following Wikipedia sentence in her paragraph without quotation marks. Goats have been used for milk, meat, fur, and skins across much of the world. Milk from goats is often turned into goat cheese. So we can see here, here's the Wikipedia article. Um, here's the sentence she just took it off of Wikipedia. So this is considered plagiarism because she literally took copy and pasted someone else's words and try to try to like pass them off as her own okay this is not what to do so what can rebecca do to make it non-plagiarized a change one word around in the sentence b add quotation marks and parentheses of where she got the source c change up at least half of the sentence to make it her own All right, if you chose B and C, you are correct. So she could either add a quotation mark um, and parentheses of where she got the source and change up at least half the sentence to make it her own. And we are gonna kind of dive a little bit more into how to do that. So for example, Rebecca should have done this. So her sentence that she took, she can use it, but she needs to include it in quotation marks. So you see the quotation mark here right before we the G in goats, and a quotation mark here at the end of E and cheese. Now, the other thing I want you to look at is what's in the parentheses. So, for example, in this Wikipedia article, there is not an author. Um, so typically what goes in between these parentheses would be the author. But since there is no author, what you need to do is put in the title of the article. So for Rebecca's case, the title of the article is called GOAT. So what she needs to do is inside these parentheses, she needs to write goat and then put these quotation marks around it to tell me that that is the title of the article she got it from, okay? And then you will also notice here, the period goes on the outside of the parentheses. So it does not go here where at the end of cheese, it goes at the very, very end on the outside of the parentheses. All right, so let's do another scenario. Coda is making a Google Slides about pecans. In a slide, he writes, pecans grow wild and cultivated throughout the Middle or American South and Midwest and Texas. So you can see here, here's the article which Coda got his information. You can see the sentence down here that he got it from. Um, and you can look up here, here is the title, what are pecans? And then here we actually have authors. Uh, so it's Danilo Alfaro and Alexandra Jones. So what can Coda do to make it non-plagiarized? A, change one word around in the sentence. B, quotation marks and parentheses of where he got the source. C, change up at least half the sentence to make it his own. Yep, it's gonna be B and C again, all right? Let's see how we can help Coda. So in order to make this not plagiarized, this is what Coda did. You can see here he put quotation marks in front of P and pecan, and at the end of his quote here after the S in Texas. 
And then what he did is in the parentheses, he put both of the author's names, which is Alfaro and Jones. So you put in their last names, not their first names, just their last names. Okay. And then at the end, he put a period after the parentheses. All right, let's talk about another scenario. So Hannah is texting her crush, Brett. She really wants to impress Brett because she knows he has a love for correct formatting of the English language. Brett asks her to send him her favorite song lyrics. Hannah sends him, gravity's holding me back. I want you to hold out the palm of your hand. So Brett is super furious and sends her back the proper way to cite these lyrics. Hannah has no chance with Brett now. So Brett's right. This is how you should actually um, like format or proper format for, oh my gosh, proper formatting to cite these song lyrics. Um, so song lyrics are a little bit tricky, um, but it's pretty much the same concept. So you have the quotes here at the front, also the quotes here. Um, at the end of the quotation. Uh, so with song lyrics, if you have two kind of like different sentences, um, or if you're quoting like two sentences, what you do to kind of like indicate that they're two different sentences um, is put a backslash. Um, so that kind of like shows a break in the lyrics. And then what you do for song lyrics is that you put the parentheses like normal, and then you put the last names of the people who wrote the song. So in this case, it's Styles, Johnson, and Harpoon. And of course, you put the period at the end here outside of the parentheses. Um, I don't know if we probably won't do song lyrics in this class. I mean, maybe if we get into like, you know, like the world wars. Um, but this one's good to know, like for doing English and stuff like that, too. All right, now let's try switching around the wording slash adding in our own words to make a sentence not plagiarized. So that's kind of the other option you can do. So here's an example. In 2016, Styles and the other members of One Direction decided to take a break from recording and touring, enabling Styles to pursue a solo career. So this is the... Um, sentence that I took off of Britannica. Now I want to use this information in my paper that I'm doing. So I could either do the quotes like I have been doing, or I can totally re reword it. Um, so here's my rewording of the sentence. I say Harry Styles went on to a solo career in 2016 after he and his fellow members of One Direction chose to take a break from touring and recording. Okay. It shares the same informational points as the original sentence. Um, but it's totally in my words. So that is not plagiarism, okay? That is A-OK -okay to do. Here's another example. So Gladiator takes place in AD 180 and is loosely based off of the historical figures. Roman forces led by General Maximus Crow defeat Germanic tribes, bringing temporary peace to the Roman Empire. So this is how I reworded it. So the movie Gla Gladiator stars Russell Crowe as Maximus and takes place in ancient Rome in 180 AD. In the movie, Maximus is a Roman general who defeated Germanic tribes, which caused brief peace in the Roman Empire. Okay, so I took the same information I got from that sentence and I just plopped it into my own words. Um, I know for some of you, this might be kind of tricky, um, it is kind of hard sometimes to think about how to reword it in your own words. Um, there is so many different ways you could reword a sentence, okay? I'm just giving you the example of how I reword it. Um, but if there's a better, like, wording that you can think of from the original sentence, that's totally fine, okay? So now it's your turn to practice. So what is the proper way to make the sentence into a quotation? Made of durum wheat and semolina, spaghetti is the most widely used of cord pastas, which are cylindric and solid. Um, so I got this quote from Britannica, and the article title is called Spaghetti. So now what you need to do is you need to put the sentence into a quotation, okay? Don't reword it, put into a quotation.
All right, so uh, the answer would be B, which is made of durum wheat or semolina. Spaghetti is the most widely used. The cord pastas, which are cylindric and solid, quote, parentheses, quote, spaghetti, quote, parentheses, period. Whew, I know, that's a lot. What is the proper way to make the sentence into a quotation? So mincing helps to distribute the flavor of the ginger more evenly throughout a dish so that you don't end up with a huge chunk in any one bite. I got this from the website, The Spruce Eats. The article title is How to Mince Ginger, and the author is Danilo Alfaro. The answer would be A. Min so, quote, mincing helps to distribute the flavor of the ginger more evenly throughout the dish so that you don't end up with one huge chunk in any bite. Quote, parentheses, Alfaro, which is the author's last name, parentheses, period. So I doubt that any of you are actually using books as resources at this moment for projects that I give you. So I'll talk about citing books next semester when I introduce to you your research paper. Ooh, is not fun? I bet most of you didn't know that was going to happen next semester. Yay. Um, so make sure that you put your resources of where you got a quote from in your MLA ci citations. Otherwise, if you don't do like that MLA citations, um, you know, at like the very end of your paper, the very end of your PowerPoint, I'm going to be like, who the heck is Alfaro? Like, who, who is this guy? Okay. That's where those MLA citations, like at the end of the paper or at the end of the slide are really helpful um, because it tells me where exactly is this author from? Um, or if I wonder what spaghetti article that you're getting this info from, because there's probably like a billion articles titled spaghetti out there on the internet. Okay. So now let's practice rewording a sentence. So reword these sentences in your own words so it's not plagiarized. The last major alterations of the White House were made in the 1960s by Jacqueline Kennedy, wife of President John F. Kennedy. Renowned for her beauty and refined taste, she collected and displays items of historic and artistic value throughout its rooms. All right, next one. Reword this question in your own words so it's not plagiarized. Once upon a time in a faraway swamp, there lived an ogre named Shrek, Mike Myers, whose precious solitude is suddenly shattered by an invasion of annoying fairy tale characters. All right, so when rewording a sentence, it doesn't have to be the same length or as complicated as the original sentence. Um, if you ever need help finding like a different word, um, so, example, like in the last one, if you're like, oh, what's another word for like solitude? I really suggest going to thesaurus.com um, and typing in like solitude, um, and it'll give you a bunch of like suggestions of other words to use. So, let's wrap this up. It's easy to plagiarize, but with one more minute of your time, you can save your behind by adding quotes and then the parentheses with the article or title, period or rewording the sentence into your own words. So plagiarism isn't just for papers or projects. Some of you copy and paste vocab words from the internet, like on your study guides. Um, yeah, no, that's still like 100% plagiarism. So look back at your grades if you do that, because they're probably not going to be very pretty on your study guides. So moving forward, let's all not plagiarize. Um, not just for social studies, but for all classes. Um, and if you do, you get zero credit for what you plagiarized, which is sad. Don't make me do that. Zeros are sad. Uh, so if you have questions for me, you can write down the answer box right now. Um, or you're more than welcome to email me or come to office hours. If you don't have any questions, just say none. So next up, you're going to do the use of an L3 Ed Puzzle intro to the Middle Age Europe. Um, and thank you for participating. Bye.